The topic for the day is cumulative frequency curve. Lesson objective to draw a cumulative frequency curve from the data given and to find the Q1, Q2, Q3 from a cumulative frequency curve. Quick notes. While you draw a cumulative frequency curve, now here I have given an example of how a cumulative frequency curve looks like. On the y-axis, it's the cumulative frequency that you take. And on the x-axis, it is the upper boundary of the class interval. And when you plot, you must have an idea about the shape of your curve. So it should be like an S-shape. Don't look for an exact S, but it should be an S-shaped curve. Moving on to the question. I'll be taking this question as an example. New Year recorded the number of words in a sentence in one chapter of a favorite book. The results are shown in the table. The first part of the question is to construct a cumulative frequency table for the data and to sketch the cumulative frequency curve. Now, as given in the introduction, we know the x-axis is going to be the upper bound of your class interval. So here, this is the class interval that you have, and the upper bound is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. So this is going to be your x-axis. So let me just mark it here, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. Now, your, your y-axis is going to be the cumulative frequency. Now, how will you find the cumulative frequency? By the term cumulative, it means every time you keep adding. So, let me just show you how the calculation is done here. The first frequency here in the cumulative frequency table remains the same. It's 5. So you just write the same value here. The next value will be 5 plus 32. So 5 plus 32 giving you a 37. The next term will be 37 plus 41 giving you a 78. And the next term, again, 78 plus 28, giving you 106. Next term, 22 plus 106, giving you 128. Do the similar steps till you get the last term. Now your cumulative frequency table is ready. And next is to sketch the cumulative frequency curve for which you have the x-axis uh, and the y-axis values given to you. So your coordinates are given as x, y, which is going to be plotted onto your graph. So 4, 5, 8, 37, 12, 78. So I'm just marking the points, the coordinates that you will mark onto your graph which should give you an S-shaped curve when joined. Now I have plotted the y-axis, which is my cumulative frequency, and the x-axis that's going to give uh, the number of words. Why, have, now why did I write number of words here? You can see that here the x-parameter that we are counting is the number of words. So you can just write the same label here, the number of words. And since there is no particular scale mentioned for your axis, so I have just taken it in this way, where for the cumulative frequency, the highest value is 150. So I have 150 here. And uh, for my x-axis, it's 32. So multiples of 4, I have 40 here. So this is how your axis should look like. And now start with plotting the coordinates. Now 4, 5, so this is 4 and this is 5. So that's what you do. You just use the coordinates, you just mark them. Now you have to just join the points to get an S-shaped curve. Make sure it's a freehand drawing, don't use a ruler. 
So this is how your curve should look. This is your points and you just draw a smooth curve from here like this. This is how your curve should look like. And remember, this is the maximum, 150 is where you have the highest value. Okay, now your cumulative frequency graph is done. I use a graph to estimate, since we are using a freehand drawing method, uh, there can be variations and slight variations in your drawing. So we are just estimating for the median and interquartile range. So let's see how can that be done. Now the formula to be remembered is when you're calculating the median, as we know median is also represented as Q2. By talking about the median, you're talking about 50% of your total data. So the formula that you will use here will be n divided by 2, the lower quartile, which is q1, is 1 fourth of the total data. So you divide n by 4. And the upper quartile is also called Q3 is where you have 75% of the data. So you have 3 fourth of N. So you can write 3 N over 4. Uh, for quick memory, I can say if it's Q2 that you're going to find, divide N by 2. Okay. If it's the upper quartile, you can remember the 3 here. It's Q3. So it's 3n over 4, 3n over 4. Back to the curve that we have already drawn. Now here the value for n is 150 in this question. So to find the median, median is Q2, we are going to divide n by 2 which is 150 over 2 giving you 75. Now, please don't write 75 as the median. It is not the median. What you do is you come to the cumulative frequency curve, mark the point 75. Can you see here? Okay. From there, you draw a straight line. Use a ruler to hit the S-shaped curve. And from that point, you drop a straight line down. So you have to use a ruler and make sure you're making these drawings. So my Q2 is here, my median, which is estimated to 12. So two things to remember, once you do N over two, when you get 75, that is not your answer. You mark from the point 75 on the cumulative frequency, you draw straight lines, use a ruler, and it is from the x-axis that you get your median. Now let's see how to find the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Now to find Q1, we know it's a lower quartile. We'll be dividing n by 4. So 150 divided by 4 again, giving you 37.5. Reminding you again, 37.5 is not your Q1. You go to your y-axis. Mark 37.5 there. From there, use your ruler. Draw straight lines. Okay. And hit the S-shaped curve. And from there, you drop the line down. And my Q1 is 8. So, I have found my Q1. I have found my Q2. So, to find my Q3, I'll do 3 times N over 4 which is going to be 3 times 150 over 4, giving me an answer, 112.5. I have marked the point here. This is 112.5. Again, draw the straight line, hit the S-shaped curve and drop it down. So this is where you get your Q3. So the value of my Q3 is going to be 17. Now, interquartile range, IQR is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So my Q3 is 17 and my Q1 is 8, which gives me a value of 
9 as my IQR. Now there is a limit within which the accuracy of this answer is discussed as there can be values uh, differing based on your drawing and your answer can vary from 9 to 11. So moving on to the next part of the question. Finding the solutions to A, B, C and D now. Determine where there are any outliers. Any value which is less than um, lower quartile minus 1.5 times IQR or any data that is more than the upper quartile UQ plus 1.5 times IQR is called an outlier. So any term less than which is less than lower quartile minus 1.5 times IQR or more than uh, the upper quartile plus 1.5 times IQR. So do these calculations and let's check. Now my lower quartile was 8 minus 1.5 times 9 and for the upper quartile my upper quartile was 17 17 plus 1.5 times 9 so let's do the checking now I have negative 5.5 and the value here is going to be 30.5 so your answer is no outliers. Next part is to find the 90th percentile. So the 90th percentile is 90 divided by 100 times n. So here my n is 90 over 100 times 150 giving me 135. So now do you go back to your graph and you mark 135 here. So from 135, because this is going to be your 90th percentile, so you draw a straight line. Please make sure that you use a ruler. I'm just drawing it freehand. So it should be here. And it's going to be 22. So the 90th percentile, your answer is 22 words. Moving on to the last part of the question, the smallest sentence had one word and the longest sentence had 31 words. Draw a box in risk of plot to represent this data. The five things that you need to draw a box in risk of is your Q1, Q2, Q3, the lowest, the least value and the highest value. From my cumulative frequency curve, I have found my Q1 as 8 words, Q2 is 12 words, and my Q3 is 17 words. Now the least value is given here, it's 1 word, and the highest, the longest sentence have 31 words, so the largest word is 31. Now using this 5 data, you have to plot your box and whisker. I have made a rough scale as shown here and I know my least value is 1, my Q1 is 8, Q2 is 12, Q3 is 17 and the highest is 31. So let me put these dots there, my least value. Okay, I'll take this as 2 so it's here which I have a 1 and my next data is going to be 8 okay I'll put a, another dot here and then I have Q2 my 12 okay and my Q3 is at 17 so this is going to be here Seventeen, one, and then I have 31 so 30, 31 is going to be around here
Now once you have put the dots, now I'll complete the box. I have my median, which is Q2. And then I just connect. I have finished with the box and then the whiskers. So this is how my box and whisker will look like. So that was the last part. So this is a box and whisker plot. So that's it. We stop for the day. Thank you.